Hey guys, I'm Miguel with Positive Energy and the Building Science Podcast. And today I'm here with John Clark, who's our Engineering Applications Manager at Positive Energy. And his job is really helping contractors and, and installers bring our designs to life. Right? They're focusing on the outcomes of the installation, so that the design is not just wishful thinking, it's something that functions very well and accurately. And the key to getting these outcomes right is focusing on the details. So today, we're here to talk about the details of a particular system that we're fond of here at Positive Energy called the Air Zone System. And John, could you tell us a little bit more about what AirZone is and what it does, and uh, then we'll get into the tricks that we found. Absolutely. So the AirZone system is basically an airside zoning system okay. that allows us to take and apply it to a BRF system, such as a Mitsubishi, Daikin, Fujitsu, many, many different brands in the mm -hmm. world out there of inverter-driven variable refrigerant flow. Right. Those systems are generally a refrigerant side zoning system okay. in which we have an air handler in each zone but sometimes we need to break that down even, even finer. Okay. And so to do that, we can take one ducted air handler and put zone dampers on it like we would a typical system, Right. but this one has the ability to communicate in that proprietary language of the manufacturer and control that system. Right, because so you're dealing with microprocessors, right? You're not yes. dealing with a standard kind of... That's correct, and everything is communicating, that. everything has software, everything uh, thinks and mm -hmm. calculates and changes constantly. Okay. So the air zone system, this is the main board, is the integral piece to that. This is our, our uh, interface, which speaks the Mitsubishi language. Got it. So in our case, we have Mitsubishi BRF installed in our office, and this is translating between the Arizona language and Mitsubishi, and they're constantly talking us with the flashing lights on. So here on our installation, uh, and, and some others with, with our partner contractors, it's been discovered that uh, there's a trick to making the wiring connections to these Phoenix connectors. And what is a Phoenix connector? A Phoenix connector is this little green solderless uh, connector that's pluggable. Okay. It's made by a company called Phoenix, and it's named Phoenix because if you look at the shape of each prong, it looks like the, Phoenix, the symbol for the Phoenix converter. That's very clever. Yeah. So we just call these Phoenix connectors. Many different brands of equipment out there in the world and types of control systems and things that use small wiring connections to utilize this connector. So this is not just specific to the air zone system. Okay. So in our travels, in our installation, first off, these screwdrivers that most technicians have and installers because they're usually promotionally free at the supply house, <laughs> uh, is too big for this. And you can force it in there and shave the plastic off as you operate the screws, but it will damage the, the connector. Okay. So it's imperative we have the right tool, such as a jeweler or precision or eyeglass type screwdriver. Great. Right. The largest flat screwdriver that will fit in here that will not damage the plastic. So the Phoenix connector generally comes plugged into the device that you're going to connect the wires to. And it comes with the screws shipped closed, so everything is tight and no parts can be lost in shipping. If you look inside, you can see that I could actually put a wire in there right now, uh, but it is not going to be a successful connection if I don't open these. The first thing I would do is loosen it. And it's a very fine thread, so I could unscrew this several turns and think, okay, I'm plenty open, time to put my wires in. Have my wires stripped and prepped. I go ahead and put my wire in. Tighten the screw, and it feels like I'm turning it, and now it's getting snug, and now I'm actually tightening it. Okay, that one's done. Uh-oh, falls right apart. So what happened there was it was not inside the clamping part of the mechanism. And as you can see, right now I could put a wire in the right place, which is at the bottom, or I could put it in the wrong place, which is at the top. The way to avoid this from happening is to go ahead and unscrew this until it can't unscrew anymore. In this particular one, you can feel that the threads come loose from the part that they're threading into and just spin. You can actually hear them. So now I know that it's all the way open. I don't have to look in there or worry about it. I can insert my wires. Tighten my screws. And this is a good, good connection. It's going to last, stand the test of time, and you won't have to go back. Of 
course, anyone that does this will want to give it a little tug test, mm -hmm. but even that can be deceiving sometimes. Now it doesn't care. It's a very firm connection. It's completely seated. And yep. it won't move. And it will not come. That's fantastic. So you can actually, learning this little trick can save you hours of frustration and confusion. And, on the and has. <laughs> it already has for, for many. Very so good. we want everyone to be equipped with this the first time so they don't have to suffer those hours of frustration to learn. That's a great tip. And if you guys want to hear more tips, be sure to follow us on Instagram. Listen to the Building Science Podcast. We've got a lot more great stuff uh, to share with you. And I want to thank you, John, for uh, showing us this fantastic little trick. My pleasure. We'll talk to you next time.